Hey there, today, we're gonna check out a tool that helps find profiles using usernames. But the coolest part isn't just the tool itself. We're also going to dive into the code it uses and explain it to you in simple terms. We're not just going to be using tools like amateurs, we'll break it down so you can really understand what's going on. Let's get into it. All right, so there's this tool called User Finder, which you can find on GitHub. It's pretty handy because it helps you find profiles using just a username. Now, why would you want to use it? Well, imagine you're doing some reconnaissance work instead of manually searching through all the different social media platforms and websites for a specific username. This tool simplifies that process for you. You just type in the username you're interested in, and it gives you all the social media accounts associated with it. Another way you can use this tool is if you're creating a brand and you want to check if the username you're considering is available across different platforms. It saves you time and hassle by quickly checking the availability for you. All right, enough talk. Let's get this tool downloaded onto our Kali Linux system. It's a simple process that many of us are familiar with downloading from GitHub. But just in case you're not, here's a quick rundown of the steps. Head over to the GitHub page of the User Finder tool. Look for the instructions on how to download. They're usually provided in the README or Installation section. Simply copy the command provided. Paste it into your terminal. Hit Enter, and the tool should start downloading. Easy as pie. All right, here are the steps to get the user finder tool up and running. First, navigate to the directory where you downloaded the user finder tool. You can do this by typing CD user finder. Next, you'll need to give permission for the tool to execute. You can do this by typing chmod plus x user finder dot sh. Now that the necessary permissions are set, you can run the tool by typing bash user finder dot sh. And that's it. You're all set to use the user finder tool. Once you've run the user finder tool by following the previous steps, you can simply type in the username you're interested in. The tool will then automatically check across various social media platforms and websites to see if that username is available or not. It's a quick and convenient way to find out if a particular username is already taken or if it's up for grabs. Just type in the username you want to check and let the tool do the rest. Now that we've mastered using the tool to find usernames across all platforms, it's time to dive deeper. We're not just script kitties here. We want to understand how this tool works and maybe even customize it to suit our own needs. Let's take a closer look at the code and learn something new. By understanding the code, we can empower ourselves to create our own tools and expand our skills. So let's explore the code together and see what we can learn. All right, let's open up the code and take a look. Upon first glance, you might see a lot of commands, but don't worry, it's actually quite straightforward. Let's explore it together. This the first code defines a function called banner in a shell script. The function uses printf to print out a styled banner to the console. Here's a breakdown of what it does. It uses ANSI escape codes for text formatting, such as color and style. For example, this sequence sets the text color to bright white. And this sequence resets the text formatting to default. The banner consists of ASCII art characters forming the text User Finder V1.0, along with additional information about the developer. The ASCII art is designed to create a visual banner. The function ends after printing the banner. When you run the script, it will display the styled banner created by the banner function. Now this code defines a function called partial in a shell script. Here's what it does. It checks if a file named username.txt exists in the current directory using the e-test in the if condition. If the file exists, it prints a message indicating that the file has been saved, with the file name in green color. This function designed to check for the existence of a file with a specific username and display a message if it exists.
Now, let's focus on the important part of the code. Let's delve into the sections that really make this tool tick. This code defines a function called scanner in a shell script. Here's what it does. It prompts the user to input a username using read. It checks if a file named username.txt exists. If it does, it removes the file. It prints a message indicating the username being checked. For example, the first part of the code checks if the username is available on Instagram. This part sends a silent as HTTP request to the Instagram URL with the provided username. The H accept language N header specifies that the preferred language for the response is English. The L flag tells curl to follow redirects if there are any. This part of the command pipes the output of curl to grep, which searches for the specified text pattern, the link you followed may be broken, and only outputs the matching part O flag. This part echoes the exit status of the previous command grep, contains the exit status of the last executed command. In this case, it indicates whether the text pattern was found or not. Overall, this command retrieves the Instagram page of the provided username and searches for the specified text. If the text is found, it indicates that the username is not available as Instagram shows a specific message when the username is not found. This line prints a formatted message indicating that Instagram is being checked. This is an ifillfl statement that checks the value of the variable checkinsta. If the value of checkinsta contains one, it means that the text pattern was found, indicating that the username is not available. It then prints a message indicating that the username is found and saves the Instagram URL to a text file. If the value of checkinsta contains zero, it means that the text pattern was not found, indicating that the username is available. It then prints a message indicating that the username is not found. This code segment checks the availability of a username on Instagram and prints the result accordingly. If the username is found, it saves the URL to a text file. It does the same process for each platform, one by one, just like it did for Instagram. For each platform, it sends a request to the respective URL and checks the response. Depending on the response, it prints whether the username is found or not found on each platform. If the username is found on a platform, it appends the URL to the username.txt file. This function essentially scans for the availability of a username across multiple social media platforms and saves the results in a text file, then it will print it. This piece of code you're looking at does something pretty neat. It actually goes through a bunch of popular social media sites like GitHub, Medium, Spotify, Code Academy, etc. to see if a particular username is available or not. And at the end, it wraps up by calling three functions, partial, banner, and scanner. I hope I've explained everything clearly for you all. I understand that for beginners, it might seem a bit challenging, but don't worry, with practice, it'll become easier. If you're interested in learning more about bash scripting for hacking purposes, let me know in the comments below. I'll consider making a video tutorial to help you out.